Okay, welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to do a few more examples on Coulomb's law a little bit more challenging examples because uh, we did some simple ones before and I want to fill up some of the holes that we have in our coverage and so here we go here's the start of a small set of some more challenging examples on Coulomb's law so here we have two objects they have a mass M and charge Q and they're hanging they're suspended from long uh, very thin uh, strings and we can ignore the mass of the strings and of course because of the repulsive forces uh, they are equally charged with uh, positive charge on both on both uh, masses so let's go put a plus and a plus there so you can see that they'll be repelled this way and of course gravity will also pull them downward and then the tension of the strings will pull them upward and the question is what will be the angle right here theta with respect of all the other variables that we have so let's go ahead and try to figure that out but first of all we want to draw in the forces involved in uh, what's going on here so in this one we have the force of gravity pulling straight down which would be mg and the for the coulomb force so i'll write a f sub c coulomb force and that can be calculated to be k times the charge of the one charge the charge of the other object divided by the distance between them squared i'll just write r squared like that and uh, realizing they both have the same charge that makes that easy and r of course will be the sum of the two distances so in this case that can be written as k times q squared divided by two times the distance quantity squared like that that would be the force to the right and the, the force of gravity downward and then we still have the tension pulling in this direction we have of course the very same situation on the other mass but let's just go ahead and work one side only now the next thing we want to do is what we call uh, graphing or drawing a vector triangle. A triangle made up of these three vectors, realizing that this is now a static situation. This will be motionless, just sitting there at that particular angle, which means that the sum of the forces must add up to zero, which means we can draw the forces in a triangular shape, and the shape of the triangle will be relative to the size of these forces right here. So we have the uh, tension pulling in this direction, Oop, and I think I made the angle just a little bit too big, make it a little bit more like this. So we have the tension in this direction, we have the force due to the Coulomb force this direction, tension is this way, so this is the Coulomb force, and then we have the force due to gravity in this direction, so that would be the mg in this direction. So here we have the sum of the three forces, and they must add up to zero, which means when we go all the way around the triangle, we get back to the same spot where we started. Also notice that this angle right here, theta, is the same angle theta that we find in here. Okay, now we can see that relative to uh, this triangle right here, we can see that for this angle, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, so we can write that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, so in this case, the tangent of theta is equal to, that would be the Coulomb force divided by the force due to gravity. So at least we have a relationship there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this relationship and try to develop it because this may be a good way to somehow uh, express the angle in terms of everything else. So let's go ahead and come over here so we can write the tangent of theta is equal to the Coulomb force, which is right here, which is K times Q squared divided by 4D squared. And we're going to divide the whole thing by mg which is equal to kq squared divided by 4d squared mg. All right, now we also want to relate uh, d to l right here. So we can take a look at this triangle right here, and we can say that uh, uh, since this is a hypotenuse and this is the opposite side, we can say that the sine of theta is equal, is equal to, to the opposite side. It's the ratio of the opposite side, d, divided by hy the hypotenuse, uh, which is L. So now we have a relationship between d, L, and the sine of theta. So I can get rid of d, which is not one of my original uh, variables. Notice that I don't want to express the angle in terms of d. So we want to replace d by, okay, here we can say d is equal to the sine of theta times L or L times the sine of theta which can go in here so this is equal to K times Q squared divided by 4 instead of D I'm going to write L times the sine square of theta notice it was D squared so it's L squared and sine theta squared times M and G 
All right, now I realize, of course, I have this, the tangent of theta, which is the sine divided by the cosine. So maybe what I can do here is write it as the sine divided by the cosine yeah. is equal to kq squared divided by 4l squared sine squared of theta times mg. And now I can take the sine squared of theta, move it over here. So when I do that, I get the sine cube of theta divided by the cosine of theta is equal to k times q squared divided by 4l squared times m times g. And finally, you can write k in terms of 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. So when you do that, you can write this as q squared divided by, that would be 4 times 4, which is 16, because the 4 came from the k and I have a 4 there, that's 16 times pi epsilon sub naught times L squared times mg. And that is the relationship between the angle theta and the other variables right there. And that's probably as far as we want to go because trying to solve this for theta outright would be rather challenging. At least we now have the angle theta on the left side and all the other variables on the right side. But it kind of shows you some very neat techniques. Again, we have forces here, the Coulomb force, and the force of gravity counterbalancing the tension in the string. Take that and draw that into a triangle relating the angle to the opposite side and the adjacent side. And then also realizing that in this triangle, we have the sine of theta related to the opposite and D divided by the hypotenuse L. And by combining those two, we now have a nice expression for the angle theta in this example. And that's how we do that.